Hello YouTubers, thanks for visiting again. This is a build video for my latest winter project. It's a Zeta Science Phantom FX61. In this video I'll take you through my build sequence and show you some of the mods that I did to the airframe in the hope of making it a bit more efficient. This model's been built primarily as an FPV vehicle to carry GoPro and Mobius cameras for full HD recorded videos. The RC control equipment is OpenLRS UHF kit programmed with the OpenLRS NG firmware and a big thanks goes out to Carr for all his hard work and dedication to the project. The UHF transmitter module is plugged into a Turn G9XR transmitter programmed with the Open9X firmware and again a big thanks goes out to Bertrand, the developer of that firmware, for all his efforts. The autopilot I use is an Arcbird which is the latest firmware installed and normally works very well indeed in other airframes. So we will see how it goes along with the FX61. OK, enough said. Let's get into it. First thing was to try and decide on a camera mount for this model as I didn't want to see any of the plane in the shots. I also decided for various reasons to use a dedicated camera for ground feed and needed to have them both together. So I opted for the mounting setup you see just back of the nose of the model. The plate itself is made from plywood and covered in a silicon gel sheeting that is anti-slip and also helps with vibration. <clears throat> the cameras are attached using aluminium brackets. Or for my American friends, aluminum. <laughs> Sorry Bernie and Jim in California, I couldn't resist it. Interchangeable cameras are nice for different situations. I modified the canopy slightly by adding cable ties for easy removal as the clips are really tight once seated. I also added a couple of velcro straps for extra security and I removed some of the foam at the front to accommodate the Mobius camera. Next is a shot of the centre section with the camera mount and motor mounted to the rear. <clears throat> I modified the top motor cowling cover by removing some of the material around it that would have deflected the airflow away from the prop. Hopefully this will allow a smoother airflow and a more efficient propeller. At the same time I also removed some of the material from the trailing edge to give more clearance whilst the prop is spinning. So, given that I'm going to fly this model at first with a single 5000mAh 3S battery and having quite a bit of electronics to fit in there too, I decided to make the base split level. I created an upper deck as you can see here with from Corex plastic sheet that would house the electronics and this would then leave me the hole of the bottom of the bay to play with batteries. The next few photos show the tray mocked in place with, the, with and without the battery and canopy. All look good so I moved on to placing the other electronic components. I positioned the GPS receiver just to the left of the centre section on the wing and cut the opening with a sharp blade and a Dremel type tool. As I'm using UHF for control on this model I built a half-wave dipole that is fitted to near the tip of the wing beyond the GPS receiver. The bottom half of the dipole, or the part below the wing, was made flexible by using the inner conductor from RG58 coaxial cable. This was glued to a strip of flexible plastic taken from a tie rubber zip tie, and this allows it to fall back on landing, then simply spring back vertical into place again when picked up. The top half of the dipole is stiff and was made from oil push rod made of spring steel. The coax feed line is fed along the wing and into the centre section for connection to the receiver. The 5.8GHz video transmitter was placed out on the opposite wing from the GPS receiver and the RC control half-wave dipole. This should offer some physical separation between all devices to alleviate, hopefully, any possible RF interference occurring. In the next few pictures I fitted the upper deck and hinged it with cable ties to the carbon spar to allow it to swing up over. Then I moved on placing and installing the other electronics into the centre section. The 50 amp ESC was placed right at the rear for two reasons. Firstly, to get some weight to the rear of the airframe, 
and secondly to allow a flow of cool air over both its surfaces and then out the back of the model. Everything seems to just worked out fine really. The two cables you can see, one down either side of the beer there. <clears throat> one is the feed for the camera and the other is the supply for a high intensity LED that I've got mounted um, on the front of the aircraft which will be useful for seeing the thing coming back towards me. Again I used a silicon gel sheet to stop the battery moving around and slide along with the velcro strap. Together they do a great job and allow me to move the battery depending on payload to get the CG correct. Here I installed the bandpass filter to the UHF receiver module on the plane which is actually a transceiver that allows two-way telemetry with the unit on the ground. This is a completed centre section that allows me to access all of the electronics for future firmware upgrades and very flexible battery placement or experimentation. Then some photos of the completed upper and lower of the model to show placement of electronics and controls. Incidentally, as this model only has two control surfaces, I opted for some high torque metal geared servos on the wings and updated all linkages to steel type clevises and push rods and beefed up the control hole mounts, both top and bottom of the surface. Just belt and braces as much as possible, really. Well, that's it for this video. We might even get a test fly of this if the weather ever gets any better up here. <laughs> but we'll have to wait and see what happens there. If you like this video, thumbs up. If you want to share it, share it about. Thanks for, visit for visiting the site, and we'll catch you some other time. Bye-bye now.